righteousness. They had been going to churches who have these dirty birds behind the pulpits that have taken away the law. What a dandy way to take away sin from our society. It's equivalent to having a red light on your car. It says check oil and so, or water it might show some kind of danger. So you reach up underneath there and cut the wire so the light doesn't show anymore and you think you fixed the car. But you need to understand this about the law. Very important to understand. I'll get back on point. It says this in Psalms 147, 19 and 20. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any nation. And as for his ordinances, they have not known them. Praise the Lord. Now, what you see there, what most people don't understand about the law, is he gave it only to Israel. And some people, as I have tried over the last 30 years to show them that God is still the God of Israel and who those Israel people are, that when they can't really defend themselves in their position anymore, they'll say, well, what difference does it make? It makes a big difference. And by the time... We get done desiring to eat the husks that are in the hog trough, as the prodigal son did. We're going to figure out that we have a heavenly father and that he has children. And we're going to come back to the father. I believe that that's going to happen. We're seeing that happen in our life right now. And I want you to know that from what I can see anyway, that one of the major purposes, not the only purpose, but one of the major purposes of the law given to Israel is to keep the wicked down. Now, we're going to go to Deuteronomy 28, 43, and 44 next. But somebody is going to be down, trampled down. And the purpose of the law was to keep the wicked trampled underneath our feet. Somebody's going to trample on somebody. Jesus said we were the salt of the earth, but if we lost our saltiness, we were good for nothing, but to be thrown out into the street and trampled under the foot. Isn't that what he said? All right. The purpose of the law is to protect us from these wicked. Now, at this point, I want to review Bible terms in regards to the wicked. This is a way of review the last couple of messages. We have children of the devil. We have tares. We have creatures of instinct. We have sons of hell. We have son of perdition, not a people, serpents, scorpions, Last Sunday, I introduced a new term to you, Assyrian, remember? And, of course, there's the word alien. Stranger in the King James, alien in the New American Standard. What was the purpose of the law? It was to keep the wicked down. Deuteronomy 28, 43, and 44, please. The alien who is among you. Now, this is the consequence of not keeping the law. The alien who is among you shall rise above you higher and higher, but you shall go down lower and lower. Now, guess what he'll do? He shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, you shall be the tail. Now, the creatures of instinct instinctively know something about economics that the dumb sheep do not know, particularly the dumb sheep who have been removed from their shepherd. They have lost a knowledge that now is causing them to be destroyed. If there is law, I want you to know there's categories of law. There's law that applies to husband-wife relationships. There's law that applies to your children. It is the law of God not to spare the rod. That's the law of God. Now, the alien came in. He was called Spock, Dr. Spock. And the people listened to the alien over their God. But there are also laws that pertain to economics. 
You've heard me speak about the law of debt release every seven years. Our bankruptcy laws are based upon that Bible law that you can take bankruptcy every seven years. In fact, the government of the society, let me put it this way, that the Lord set up for the Israelites, everybody took bankruptcy every seven years. That kept everybody free. You heard me talk about the law of Jubilee. That was seven times seven. That, that was seven sevens. The 49, the number, the next year was the 50th year. That was the year of Jubilee. It was not only a year of release, it was a year of redemption and getting back property that had been lost over that period of time. These are economic laws, laws pertaining to usury. Economic laws. Now get this. If there are economic law, and law is a viola a sin is a violation of God's law, then there are economic sins. But we don't hear in our society them talking about economic sins. The concept is totally foreign to us. We can't talk about greed or we talk about corruption or whatever. How about economic sin. The word sin, for the most part, is never used, not only in the political arena, but in economic discussions anymore. Now, if the law was given only to Israel, and it was, that means the economic laws that we have apply, get this, only to Israel. Well, let's soak that in a little bit. I want you to know that this preacher has a degree in economics from university, ag business and economics. And it's not a boast, it's just a statement. And I want you to know this is not a boast either, but I've always had an aptitude. Everybody has aptitudes for different things. Some people have an aptitude for music. Some have an aptitude for uh, chemistry. When I was trying to get in pre-vet uh, into vet school, I couldn't figure out how everybody could figure out all these chemical equations. I just didn't have the aptitude there. But when it came to economics, I loved it. I loved my economic classes, and I, and I could really get a handle on it up until I got into the area of the Federal Reserve System. Oh, I passed the test. I uh, I, I read the book, and I, I went through all that. But I tell you, I just didn't understand it. But what they do is they snow you with all this stuff, and, and so you think everybody else is understanding it. And uh, you know what, you ever, you ever had that happen in the class? You know what answer to put on the, the test, but you really don't understand it. That's where I was with that particular class. But I want you to know I've always had an aptitude towards it, and since then I've studied even more concerning economics, and I've learned so much more about economics after getting out of the university because I got into the Word of God, and this is a tremendous economic textbook. There are economic laws in it. And I will tell you this, that there is an economic truth that is not taught in any, as far as I know anyway, any university in America. I don't care if it's Harvard, Yale, or whatever. These economists do not have this formula. And because you came to the Laporte Church of Christ this morning, you're going to get it. It's a formula that pertains to the wheat. Now, as I said, the law was given to Israel. That means the economic laws apply only to Israel. Here is the formula that will help you understand economics like no other formula that I know of. And it is this. More sin equals more poverty. Is that simple? That is the economic law for the wheat. Now, let's back that up by looking at Scripture. Deuteronomy 28, 11 through 13. And understand, if you'll take time to read Deuteronomy 28 or Leviticus 26, that your 